there is no uh, denying the fact that Nigeria has struggled with debilitating levels of poverty for several decades in spite of our huge potential and huge earnings, especially for oil. Indeed, the last results of the, uh, the poverty studies undertaken by the Bureau of Statistics in 2012 showed that 112 million Nigerians were living in extreme poverty. When we came into office in 2015, three things were clear. One, that we needed to move very quickly and ambitiously to respond to issues of poverty, malnutrition, disease, and illiteracy. The second was that there will be no quick fixes or miracle cures. It will be a long and painful journey out of the status quo. I would need to be patient and consistent in the implementation of all our interventions. Three, just as uh, we're reaping uh, presently the consequences of neglect and sometimes poor decisions that have been taken in the past, we can change the consequences that await us in the future by changing the decisions that we take now in the present and by ensuring that we make the right decisions and stick to them. These realizations have guided us over the last three years, even as we've developed a vision for a Nigeria that is healthy, educated, and positioned to fully unleash its development potential. This is what informed the creation and implementation of our social investment program, which is now the largest of its type in Africa, a multifaceted intervention simultaneously targeting poverty, hunger, unemployment, financial exclusion, and the absence of skills needed for our large youth population to thrive in the 21st century. Every country that has taken significant numbers of its population out of poverty, at least in the last three decades or so, have had to put in place a robust social investment policy, such as we have at the moment. And this includes India, Brazil, etc. India, which <clears throat> had the largest number of poor people in absolute terms, did exactly what we are doing today, microcredit for uh, the, the, the bottom of the rung and the commercial value chain. Government jobs program, composite government jobs program, school feeding, conditional cash transfers, or just simple cash transfers. All of these are the steps that other nations of the world that are committed to taking their people out of poverty have done, aside from several other steps that they've taken. But since that March meeting, the social investment program has seen a significant expansion. We have added more than 2 million children to our school feeding program. We now have an excess of 9 million school children being fed every day across 26 states. NPA, our job scheme for unemployed uh, graduates and non-graduates, has more than doubled since then. We, are now, uh, we now have 500,000 beneficiaries of the NPA program all across the country in every single local government. And our trader money microcredit scheme, or petty trader, excluded from formal lending opportunities, has now benefited well over a million petty traders. Market money, which started earlier, but which obviously didn't receive as much publicity, has also uh, taken almost 400 to 500,000 beneficiaries. I'm not exactly certain of the number now as of today. In terms of healthcare, we've also recorded some landmark achievements. The setting up of the basic healthcare provision fund, with seed funding of 1% of our consolidated revenue fund, as outlined in the National Health Act. I'm pleased to say that Nigeria, for the first time, is complying with the stipulations of the Act since it was signed into law in 2014. The vision to accelerate human capital development by uh, 2030 has, as you've already heard, and if you look in particular at page 18 of the document that we have, is all set out there. All what we have listed there are the efforts and uh, basically efforts and inputs, and some of what I've just uh, re uh, referred to now are basically the efforts and inputs that we've made. Ultimately, it is the outcomes that are important. 
we must be able to show that all of what we are doing and investing is producing tangible results in the quality of lives of our citizens. The end goal is a country where it is not a miracle for infants to live beyond the age of five, where our children are in no danger of malnutrition, and where every child is guaranteed access to uh, basic education, and where basic minimum package of healthcare benefits is guaranteed to every citizen, and no one is shut out on account of the fact that they cannot afford it. Nigerians everywhere deserve to live healthy, educated, and productive lives regardless of where in Nigeria they live or whatever other peculiarities they may have. By the sheer nature of our constitutional arrangements, the federal government must work with state governments, and state governments must work with each other. The only way to succeed is by recognizing that this is a joint and several responsibility. This is not and should never be a platform for blame games or buck passing. In the past, this has not worked, and will not work now. Nothing short of concerted collaboration is required from all of us across all tiers of government. And with the partnership and support of the private sector, traditional and religious, uh, 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 traditional and religious leaders, community leaders, and the international community, there's much learning to be uh, shared and exchanged to ensure that we're not repeating the mistakes that have already been made and to ensure that we are collecting uh, and that we are allocating resources maximally and in efficient ways. Very importantly, there's a work of communication, of carrying Nigerians along, of carrying our citizens along, of making the vision clear and repeating it as often as possible, and making it simple, easy to understand, and transparently showing how the resources which belong to them are being deployed to work for their benefit. We must never underestimate the importance of communicating and ensuring that we get the best buying from the citizens on behalf of whom we are holding uh, public office. Last but not the least is the importance of collecting credible data to support our programs and policies and to accurately measure their impact. What cannot be measured is always said, cannot be managed. The wisdom of these words should always stay with us. We must find ways of improving also the quality, of, the quality of the data that we collect and the timeliness. And we must, of course, resist the temptation to play politics with these statistics or be overly defensive when they don't cast us in very good light. The lesson is to listen to what the data is telling us and to vigorously look for ways to respond uh, with policy interventions. I have no doubt at all that we are on the right path. But we must stick to this path. We cannot afford anything that will slow us down or take us away from these commitments that we've started to implement. We owe it to all of our people, young and old, male and female, especially the poorest and most vulnerable amongst us, to improve the quality of their lives and the quality of healthcare and education and the jobs that are accessible to them. I must commend your excellencies for the patriotic cooperation across party lines in resolving many of our nation's problems. I recall the summits of uh, the National Economic Council on security, the summits on education, and now on human capital development. All of these contributions that we've made and all of the time and resources that have been spent have been done with complete patriotism, and, in the, and this, in my view, is the way that we should go. We've crafted the vision, we have made the commitments, and we pledge our support. Now it's time to get uh, the job done.